Welcome to Thunderbolt. Today we're going to look into the mind of a young programmer. So, <laughs> all right, to do that, boy genius, welcome. Hello. Hello, hello. So, tell us who you are and what you do. Hello, my name is Hajin and I'm 11 years old and I'm a student of the bac baccalaureate online and yeah, I do coding. Good, good, good. So, um, when I was a kid, I, it was referred to as programming. Yes. Now it's coding. Yeah. Right? So, what language do you use? Python and I kind of use C++ for Arduinos and block coding for like um, Scratch and Entry. I guess almost, I try to learn as many as possible. But why? Why do we have to know so many different languages? The difference between like C and Java or Python is usually the um, grammar kind of stuff. English and Spanish, it's kind of similar at some point, but kind of different. It was dif made from different times and different people, which created that kind of different thing. So I think the most important part is that if you're developing an app for like Apple, you need some kind of, you need to learn language called Swift. Mm. But if you want to create like an Android app, you need some kind of other language. Now, when that happens, uh, people might like, so Apple, Apple developers can't understand like what Android developers are saying. And that can create problems. So I think like for me to develop like a whole wide, wide app kind of thing, I think I should learn much language as possible. I remember when I was a kid, um, to be a developer, you had to have a special type of computers. No. Not anymore? You just Swift, an Apple, um, Apple with that language, that language is runnable in iPads. Okay. You don't even need like a, like any laptops anymore. You, there's a, something called like App Inventor that are built specially for Android apps that uses just web connection. So only thing you need is actually your phone. I mean, there are some limitations in there, but I believe that, well, that's enough for like trialing how right. you would feel about making apps. How did you start getting into coding and making apps? I first touched coding when I was like in elementary school. I done like a computer kind of class thing. I didn't even like try to understand coding that time. I just like done fun things with like the block codings and everything and just want, built my own where I didn't actually follow how the teacher said to me. So then, then I thought I wasn't good at coding, but my dad is actually a programmer. So after that kind of class, um, I said to my dad, I kind of don't know how to do like coding. So can you teach me? And he said, yes. And we started learning. So yeah, that led for me to first use Python. And yeah, that. And at that point, how old were you? So the first time I touched coding was I, I was like first grader okay. and I didn't know anything about them. And then I started getting like these ideas and I started making my own games. Who are some of your role models? My role model is Elon Musk, actually, okay. except for his ethical part. <laughs> okay. I like how he goes for his impossible dream that everybody said was impossible. So for him to complete his goal of going to Mars, he built Tesla, SpaceX, a, a, like a spaceship company, Hyperloop, another transportation company, um, Starlink, a network com company, Neuralink, a company where plants right, chips right. in their brains, and so on to just achieve his goal to go to Mars. I like how he thinks ahead and develops things that will be needed on Mars than will be needed while going to Mars. So yeah, I like how we views it that way. Let's talk about inspirations. How do you find inspirations to create? 
So I usually walk down the street or read my book or watch Thunderbolts or anything. And these ideas come to my brain and they get connected and make some kind of bond. And they create like this blueprint. And it's just so amazing to me that how I just got this idea and creates this blueprint. And this gives me the idea how to build my stuff. But this creates some problems because before I usually build, I don't plan, which causes some problems. And there's another problem that I hadn't um, said in a while, but I have problems with forgetting my work. And that leads to forgetting my homework. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. uh, which creates some problems, but I believe that plan, um, Building what your ideas is really important. You know the meaning of the word utopia? Yes. Okay. So how perfect is your coding world? I mean, I usually don't fix mm. many stuff in the reality, but I like to develop my own and put it inside the inside reality. So in my co in my world of coding, it's like Everything isn't actually really perfect because I believe there will be errors in my programs and that causes my utopias to be like developed again. And yeah, I think that there's no perfect utopia, but I believe that uh, my, create, my creations in the utopia can be brought to the real world and be fixed a little to create perfect thing, I believe. How do you deal with glitches and failures? Do you get angry, like upset? Yeah, I guess so. What do you do? I just lie on my bed and don't <laughs> do anything or just read my books. Okay. That's pretty healthy. I like that. Good, good, good. And are you aware that your life is actually quite different than most of the kids at your age? Yes. How do you feel about that? Well, what, when I do like these coding, mm. my friends are usually going to academies and finding like, like whatever, like the equations they are writing. I don't do that quite much as them, but I believe that doing and focusing on something and feeling happiness from that, I feel like sometimes it can be more important than education. You said sometimes you get so into coding, you'll forget uh, like doing homework and things. So when you code, what is the longest that you actually sat and focused? I never thought about that, but yeah, it's just, it's like if I sit, it's over one hour. Mm -hmm. Then if I sit more, it's like two hours and it goes on forever if I just sit. But there's one point where all the glitches just keeps popping out, even if I try to just um, stop them. So at that point, I just get a bit frustrated and just do something else than coding for a minute and just hop back right into. Do you know where the glitch is going to happen? In my recent code, I added some kind of uh, operator error. I believed that none times can be divided at that time. So I just ran the code and it got an error at that specific line. So I I thought, now I learned about like non-division errors, yay. And then and I edit that code and usually it gets fixed. Who do you communicate these things with? Like I, you told me your father's a programmer, so there's definitely an advantage for you. But I'm thinking that there must be a peer that you should be able to talk to, like a friend maybe. Do you have a person that, or a friend that you could talk to that, to share these ideas maybe? Chatting. Chatting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let's talk about it. How powerful is it? How powerful is the AI now? If you give the idea, it writes an amazing code. You just need to get that idea and ask ChatGPT to create a model of it or ask ChatGPT to create a code of it 
or give ideas for like the painting of it. ChatGPT can all do that, and it's just mind blowing that if you have the right idea and the right examples, you can create anything with the, with ChatGPT. For the years that you've been working on, you have been working on some interesting stuff. Could you show us some? First, this screen pops out and asks your name. So if I write my name, so this is a basic program that tracks your distance from the face and the screen, so that well, kids can have their eyes safe. You know, so. Let's see if it works. <laughs> so if I get <laughs> if I get too close, uh, this uh, error message pops up. Why did you write this? Why did you write this program? Because I wanted to help kids、um, be safe with their eyes, and a lot of people nowadays wears glasses because of these blue lights coming from them. And I want to limit like that and how. We get too close sometimes. So, like while I'm watching like a video, I sometimes forget where I am and just dives into. And then, if this is used every day, I believe 